Followed by brighter skies, a high of 13 degrees. From Global's Newsroom, for LBC, I'm Thomas Watts. WW Weight Watchers Reimagined have a new customised weight loss programme, MyWW, where no foods are off limit. Just fill out a simple assessment and get matched to a plan that suits you. You love eating carbs, cooking at home or eating out? No problem with this new customised plan. Discover which new MyWW plan can make losing weight easier for you. Join now and get 50% off your first three months. Offer ends 8th of February, subscription fees and conditions apply. Mainland UK only. See website for details. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation. The Nigel Farage Show. We're out. We are no longer members of the European Union. I did speak to Nick Ferrari at half past ten on Friday night, but it's my first time on LBC since the big moment. Um, well, of course, I'm happy. I mean, I went for a walk yesterday in the English countryside. The sun was shining. I thought it looked more beautiful and wonderful than ever. But that's because I've wanted this for 27 years. I have to say that the mood, the atmosphere in Parliament Square on Friday night... It was a bit like VE Day must have been. There was less kissing, I think, perhaps, than we saw on VE Day. But uh, the joyous mood of celebration was incredible. And I think mixed with relief, just sheer relief. Met a lot of people yesterday um, out of London who just said, thank God it's over. Now, it's not completely over, of course. There is a lot of work to be done. But the big legal split from the European Union has happened. And even Donald Tusk accepts that the UK is not rejoining. Uh, I thought there was also a remarkable intervention by Tony Blair on Friday, which I think has had far too little coverage. I mean, I, you know, those list that listen to me know I've very rarely had anything nice to say about Tony Blair, other than he's very competent and very good. But Blair saying that the UK should make the best of Brexit, and he warns against a push to try and rejoin, and we will, at 11 o'clock today, talk a little bit about... Are we coming together as a country? And who are those that are holding out and now beginning to look somewhat bitter, uh, in my view? But for now, we're out, we're free. Um, we're never going back. We have passed the point of no return. I've, I've got absolutely no doubts about that. But what happens next? Well, let me tell you, um, there is no hanging around. Because tomorrow, the EU's lead negotiator, yup, they've reappointed Michel Barnier, no surprise there. He will He will set out the European Union's demands. Similarly, Boris Johnson, in a big speech, will set out what the UK's demands are. And it's as if we're beginning this negotiation again from scratch. That's pretty much where we are. Now, this morning, uh, Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab was on Sky News, giving us some indications of what we might hear from Boris Johnson tomorrow. We've got the deal. You can examine the terms. It's not my word or anyone else's word. Um, and the commitment is to avoid all of those things with a best-in-class free trade agreement. And I'm sure and uh, we're committed to it on our side, and I'm sure that you'll want to uh, stay committed to the, the undertakings that they've made. That's what we expect. That's what negotiation is all about. But if you're not aligning with the EU, then that does mean checks, it does mean paperwork, it does mean bureaucracy, it does mean cost for business, and frankly, it probably means job losses as well. Well, it would be, I think, a step backwards by the EU in terms of the undertakings they've made, but we've been clear. It'll either be a Canada-style best-in-class free trade agreement or something looser, like the Australians have this 2008 economic partnership framework. Just to talk about checks, though, so when Michel Barnier says there will be checks, he's wrong, is he? Yes. Okay. He's wrong if the EU lives up to its commitments on its side, both in the withdrawal agreement but also the political declaration. So that was Dominic Raab on Sky News this morning. So Boris Johnson tomorrow giving a big speech in London. There'll be uh, several EU ambassadors in the room, we understand. This is what we're told Boris Johnson is going to say tomorrow. That we will not align with EU rules. We will not allow the European Court of Justice to regulate UK-EU trade relations and disputes. We will refuse any extension of transition past December the 31st, 2020. We will not put the NHS on the table in trade deals with America, Japan, Australia or other countries. We will not relax rules on food hygiene, workers' rights and the environment. And we will sit separately from the EU in the World Trade Organization. Yes, that's right, we become a country again. We actually become a country. We will sit at the WTO and we'll have a flag on a desk and there'll be no... 
Irish bureaucrat or official or MEP to tell us we can't have a flag on our desks. Um, and I have to say, I'm going to ask you this morning, you know, what do you want to see Boris delivering? On these trade talks, what are your priorities? Because the next debate, and you heard it with Sophie Ridge's question, some will say, unless we're aligned to EU rules, it will mean checks, it will mean job losses. Well, let me give you my point of view on this. I, I absolutely would have gone ahead and stood against Boris Johnson's incumbent Conservatives at the general election, which may well have led to the Lib Dems doing incredibly well, but it didn't need to happen because... Boris came out at the last minute and made this promise of no regulatory alignment. And this, for me, is the absolute key. If everything, from financial services to fisheries, is aligned with the EU rulebook, we'll be accepting rules over which we have no say whatsoever. And we'll be, we'll be condemning the 88% of our economy that does not export to the EU. We'll be condemning them to having to, having to organise on a European basis when they don't even do any business with them. And that would be crazy. This is our chance to help small business. It's our chance to reach out to the rest of the world. So what do I want to see um, in, in, in terms of what Boris does in these trade talks? Well, I have to say, I think, as an opening gambit, I agree with every single word of what Boris Johnson apparently is going to say tomorrow. And I have to be honest, I saw Dominic Raab, the Foreign Secretary, this morning, and I told him that. I said, look, you stick to this course. I mean, we're all going to be very, very happy. Now, think back. Think back. Theresa May as Prime Minister. Brexit means Brexit. The Lancaster House speech. And I sat in this chair and said, I don't believe it. A British Prime Minister is using the same words and phrases that I've used for 20 years and been condemned for and called all the names under the sun, and now it's mainstream. But she didn't stick to it, did she? She didn't stick to it. David Davis, the Brexit secretary, was consistently undermined and then overridden by Ollie Robbins and the civil service, and we finished up with a Remainer's Brexit, which quite rightly Parliament condemned. So I want to see us break free properly, uh, and if that means that over the course of the next few weeks there are going to be some very tough converse, uh, conversations, well, so be it. There's one other thing I would add to this list, and that's fishing. You know, really, really important that we actually get back our genuine territorial rights under international law. That does not mean we'll ban all foreign fishing boats from coming anywhere inside the 200-mile zone or the median line, but it does mean they'll operate on our rules. And I've had enough of a common fisheries policy that's been a disaster for our communities and has also environmentally done such huge damage as well. So, what would you like to see done? Um, and I, but Neil says to me from Surrey, has your advice ever been requested? Not officially, Neil, but let me put it like this. Everything I said to the Conservative Party before the general election about if they wanted us to stand candidates down, what needed to be done has been done. As I say, I love what I'm hearing, but I did with Theresa May at Lancaster House, so I intend personally to keep a watching brief on all of this over time, and there's going to be a new website set up as part of a think tank called Brexit Watch, and they're experts on fishing, experts on the Northern Irish border, experts on trade, and some deep inside Brussels will tell us exactly what is going on. And, and we're doing that because Brexit Central had been doing that job, but it was very much a part of the Conservative Party, and it's now closing down. It's closing down because we're told it's all over, it's done. Well, it isn't all over, it's not all done. Make no mistake about it. When we look back in 100 years, 200 years, 11 o'clock last Friday was the moment, and you could say... The rest of what follows is detail, but it is very important detail. Let us go to Jason, a new caller from Welland Garden City. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Nigel Farage. I am one of your greatest admirers, and I wish to thank you on my behalf and the behalf of the nation and indeed the French nation for all the work that you have been doing for our Brexit. In fact, on Friday evening, yep. interestingly, I was watching online 
the um, uh, celebrations in Paris organized by the Frexit movement. Yes, I know. And I was practically in tears. Do you know something? It breaks my heart to see that this huge organization called Frexit, which has become so very popular indeed because of the excellent uh, reporting that they do and analysis of the European Constitution is absolutely impacting on the French nation in a huge way. And I'm delighted to report to you, which you may already be aware of, the fact that they uh, hugely uh, respect you, admire you, and use you as a well, point of reference that's, for any that, That's very analysis. kind, Jason. I must say, I must say, over the last couple of days, yeah. I've had a lot of messages Good. from politicians, commentators, uh, from all over Europe, Indeed. and a lot of them have come from France, and I've had yeah. contact with a lot of French figures. Yeah. And I have to say, at some point in time, I mean, don't forget, the French voted against the Constitution. Indeed, in, the f- 2000 and, uh, in, in, uh, in 2005. I was there in Paris that night. The French yeah. also... When they had a vote on the Maastricht Treaty, by the narrowest of margins it passed, had it not been for the French overseas territories, mainland France actually voted against the Maastricht Treaty. And I, Jason, I, you know, would I go into rural, small town France and see people, they have exactly the same view of Brussels that people in this country do. Now, Jason, what do you want to see? Because Macron is trying to be the tough guy, although yeah. although he's got huge internal he's problems, as you know. I mean, massive problems. Yeah. But but Macron's being tough. Merkel's trying to be tough, but showing her fear. Yeah. What do you think the right approach from Boris Johnson is? Do you know, quite frankly, not being an expert in economics, but having followed the... Uh, particularly the Frexit movement, have their own television uh, channel in which they bring... Um, analysts and scholars and experts in all fields of European history and politics and they actually show the viewers how each and every article in the um, European Constitution... So that, Jason, that's a- fine. That's affects, fine. Affects. That's fine. But, but, but should Boris Johnson, should he go for non-alignment with EU rules or would it be more sensible to align with that big market on our doorstep. No, we, we don't want to align with anything. Boris Johnson has to look at Britain's interest and bear in mind that in the background there's the European oligarchy trembling in their boots because France in particular will be out right. sooner or well, later. Well, Jason, I think we've led the way. I think this is the beginning of the end of the European Union. Thank you for your call. And it was very interesting. There was a very thoughtful article in the Telegraph on Saturday written by Tony Abbott, the former Prime Minister of Australia. And Tony Abbott said that this is the biggest change in geopolitics since the fall of the Berlin Wall. And, and clearly what Tony Abbott meant is that this European Union cannot survive in its current form and it's the Brits that have led the way. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC it's 10.15. LBC London's air pollution affects every borough and everyone's health, especially children the main cause? Road transport. The Mayor and TfL are working to clean up London's buses and taxis but there are things we can all do as well. By swapping just one car trip every week for walking, cycling or public transport, we can help make London's air cleaner together for everyone. See how the Mayor and TfL are working towards cleaner air. Sign up to do your bit and swap that trip at lbc.co.uk. Treat yourself this weekend and save even more in the Furniture Village sale. But hurry, extra savings on sofas, dining and beds end this Sunday. January is tough enough without a broken boiler. Keep your home warm and working this winter with two years interest-free credit and your boiler installed by one of our expert engineers. Plus, you'll get a five-year British gas warranty and we can even quote by video call after work or on weekends. Get a quote by the 29th of February and you can also get £200 off a new boiler or £400 off for our existing home care customers. Search British Gas New Boiler. Conditions apply. You can't stop a sneeze. But with Dettol, you can help stop it spreading from surface to surface. 
kill 99.9% of bacteria and cold and flu viruses living on your surfaces. Clean it, kill it, and help stop the spread of cold and flu with Dettol. See instructions on pack. <coughs> Hello? It's time you swapped your daily grind for some sun, sea, and salsa! Sangria! Sun lounger! Siesta! Salsa! The dip! Sandals! Santa lotion! Uh, we've done salsa, right? we? In the Seychelles, Spain, or anywhere else in the world, at surprisingly low prices. When you need a holiday, it's time to travel Republic. Book with confidence at all protected. What does the future of recruitment look like? Find out at the free to attend Recruitment Agency Expo at Olympia London. Discover new trends and how to capitalize on them. Tap into the latest innovations, services, and technology. And take part in over 50 free seminar sessions. Future proof your agency at the Recruitment Agency Expo. Coming to Olympia London on the 4th and 5th of February. Register for free entry at recruitmentagencyexpo.com. If you started your own furniture store today, you might not call it Fishpools. But if it was 1899 and your name was Ernest Fishpool, well, it actually was. And he actually did. These days, Fishpools in Waltham Cross is one of the largest furniture stores in the southeast with a stunning range of on trend designs. There's up to 50% off in our winter sale, but only until Sunday. See it all in store and at fishpools.co.uk. That's a website, Ernest? Leading Britain's conversation LBC, The Nigel Farage Show. I'm asking you, what approach do you want Boris Johnson to take in these trade talks? There's no question the EU are going to play hardball, at least to begin they are. Boris, it appears, is going to set out some conditions which I agree with 100%, meaning we don't align with EU rules. But of course, the big global story still is coronavirus. Overnight, we have heard of the first death outside China. A 44-year-old man in the Philippines has died. He went into the Philippines from Wuhan about 12 days ago. In China itself, the death, the official death toll is 300, and we're told there are 12,000 cases. But, and here's something no one's been reporting. I spoke to uh, some friends in Hong Kong yesterday who made, and there's a huge row going on there, because they want Carrie Lam to completely close the border with China. She hasn't done that yet. But of course, on the other hand, Where's the food going to come from? So there's some really, really big issues. And in fact, there have been protests again on the streets of Hong Kong about the border not being closed. But here's the point that was made to me. We've just had the Chinese New Year. New Year in China is much, much, much bigger than Christmas. It's rather like Christmas here or, say, Thanksgiving in the USA. Hundreds of millions of Chinese people left the cities and went back to the country and the small towns to be with their families for Chinese New Year. And I don't think we're going to have any idea of the extent of the spread of coronavirus for at least another 10 or 12 days. And I'm sorry to sound like the prophet of doom on this, but it's just a factor that nobody has really talked about or considered. You know, there's, there's been a huge push from the countryside into the cities in China over the last few decades. And, and who's to say? Maybe, you know... Maybe something like three, four hundred million people left the cities and went out to the country. Now, in this country, 11 Britons are due to arrive back from China to join the 83 UK nationals who are currently in quarantine up on Merseyside. Um, and let's go to Merseyside now and speak to LBC reporter Thomas Dunn. Thomas, good morning to you. Good morning, Nigel. Yes, you're right there. Eleven more people are on the way back from China. All UK nationals, they were able to be boarded onto what I believe to be a French flight out of the city of Wuhan, which has been the epicentre almost of this coronavirus outbreak. And they will be heading to Arrow Park Hospital on the Wirral, which is just about two or three miles or so outside of Birkenhead. These are Britons who missed the flight from Wuhan on Friday, right. which saw 83 people sent to Arrow Park, which is from an RAF base in Bryce Norton. Now, it's my understanding this latest flight will be landing in France this afternoon before coming over the channel to the same RAF base. People will have also heard, as you mentioned, 
mentioned earlier about the first fatality to happen from coronavirus outside of China, which may have increased worries of how or when it could be spreading here. Earlier on, I spoke to Professor John Ashton, who is the former regional director for public health here in the northwest. These folk who've been returning to the country and have been kept an eye on to make sure they're okay. Local people have got nothing to worry about because they're being securely looked after and so on. The, the bigger picture is how this epidemic, if it turns out to be an epidemic, unfolds over the next week or two or three or four. We don't know really when it started and the problem is that China has a history of not sharing data very well so it could have been going on for some time. It's quite difficult to know where we are on that curve. Well, up here on Merseyside, we've also seen pictures of the generosity that the public have been giving to those people that have been quarantined. Donations of food and books have been given to the Arrow Park Hospital, which has been passed on to the 83 people in there. And we've also heard from Arrow Park Hospital themselves, the NHS Wirral CCG. And many people were a bit confused as to why these people were quarantined up here in the northwest when they were landing down in Oxford. Well, a short statement from Arrow Park has been released this morning saying that the hospital was chosen because it offers appropriate accommodation and other facilities and it also allows the health of those in the group to be regularly monitored and as necessary medical facilities close at hand should they be required. And on the other side of the Pennines Thomas, um, what is happening in York and Newcastle? Well, we've heard, haven't we, Nigel, about this hotel in York, and there are in Newcastle two people that we know for sure have contracted the the coronavirus from Wuhan, and they are being treated at Newcastle's RVI at the moment, and also the hotel in York is being closely monitored by Public Health England to make sure the risk and the spread of the coronavirus is tackled as soon as possible. Thomas, thank you very much indeed. And of course, any breaking news on coronavirus, LBC will be here 24-7. To cover it, back to the Prime Minister, what approach would you like to see? Chris is calling from South Croydon. Good morning, Chris. Oh, good morning, Nigel. Yes, um, what I, I would like to see is he makes it sure he draws a firm red line around our fishing industry. Yes. I mean, the theft of our greatest natural resource has been an outrage ever since um, they, they tricked us when we, when we first joined. And I get very annoyed when people say it's only 0.1% of our economy. It's still worth billions. And if we got it back, um, it could help more than anything to revitalise these um, north and eastern and coastal <coughs> towns and cities, don't you think? Chris, and in Scotland, too. Chris, this could be the key to dealing with Nicola Sturgeon's constant demands yes. that she wants another yes. referendum. I mean, I, for one, by the way, don't believe that Scotland would opt to vote to leave the United Kingdom in order to apply to join to Brussels. But I think if Boris gets back Scottish fishing waters, I think that will end the separatist argument. I really, it, really do. Yeah, yes, it's more, you know. more valuable, in fact, than the North Sea oil. You know, and you make the point about the resource. Our fish that swim in what should be our waters, Chris, are the greatest renewable resource that we possess. And if you manage yeah. them, if you manage them properly, I mean, goodness gracious me, they're a most fantastic asset. And the reason fishing is such a small part of our economy is because it's collapsed. It's quite yeah. it's just as simple as that. So, Chris, it, that, that for you is the big red line, yeah? Yes, and may I say in conclusion, um, Nigel, I do hope um, they give you a knighthood because I think um, <laughs> Sir Nigel Farage... It would be a worthy successor to Sir Nigel Gresley, who you may probably know designed the Flying Scotsman steam locomotive. I did know that. from I learned that when I was, I was about a 10, I think. But yes, I did remember that. Chris, that won't happen anytime soon, but thank you for the point. We're off to Athens to speak to Professor Sony. Good morning. Good morning, Nigel Farad. Very nice to hear you. Uh, let, me, let me remind you something. Before the UK's referendum, June 2016, we mm -hmm. had the Greek Greg's referendum. Yes. Taking, voting for Grexit, 65% of the Greek population, this is very important, and nothing has happened so far. No one's discussed, no one's discussed about it. Even the European Union, I ignore it, completely ignore all these kind of issues, the facts and the arguments voting for Grexit, 2000, I remind you, July 2015. Yes, I mean, I mean, I mean, Brexit. I mean, Professor, it wasn't explicitly Grexit, but it was a, a really... No, it was 
explicitly Greg's, let me tell you. Mm. Since the questions put forward for voting for or against, it was for uh, Greece remaining in the European Union or outside Euro. Yeah, all I, I mean, what I do remember from that period, I remember um, Mr. Tsipras, who was your Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, the Prime Minister. Yeah, I saw him arrive in the Brussels institutions with his head held high. He went into meetings with Tusk, Juncker and others. And I then saw him face to face at a reception about three hours later. Um, He wasn't holding his head high anymore. He was looking down at the floor. He looked like a beaten man. I don't know what they threatened him with. He clearly wanted a substantial loosening of the relationship over the euro. But he just gave up. But the odd thing, Professor, is it seems to me since then the Greek people have rather given up. Or am I wrong? Oh, yes, definitely. This, is, this was the case. The Greek people supported Brexit. Not the Prime Minister, not even the no. Minister Varoufakis. But are the Gre- are, have the Greek people still got the will to resist the European Union? How? Uh, after, uh, let me remind you, after 10 years in Memorandum of Understanding, after almost uh, eight years uh, of, of the debt restructuring, the, the, the so famous PSI, and uh, the great res- recession of the Greek economy, it's difficult to identify now sources of supporting Brexit. Mm. Well, and, uh, you, you have also some responsibilities, Nigel. Let me tell you, we have invited you many times in Athens, in Greece. I know. To tell us some things. Yes, but nothing had happened. We have spoken together when we, you, you were in Wask, D.C. Yeah. And I have invited you in Athens, but <laughs> well, no I one has appeared I, I, over I, there. I, I tell you what, I tell you what, I have got a wodge of invitations already to go and speak across the whole of Europe. I will. I've been quite busy on the UK stuff uh, for much of the last 27 years, but I promise you I will get to Athens at some point. I absolutely promise you, and I thank you for your call and for your passion. Believe me. There is going to be a huge debate that kicks off around the whole of the rest of Europe. Matthew in Heathrow has been a regular caller to me in the last three years. Matthew, good morning. Morning, Nigel. Uh, Yes, you know, I've been involved in import-export all of my life. Yes, yes. And... I mean, um, I mean, I accept that we're going to have to have customs borders now so we can do trade deals with the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. But we do still need the tariff-free free trade with Europe. Otherwise, we're going to lose so much business what's already okay. existing there. So, 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 Matthew, when Boris talks about a Canada-style trade deal, he's talking about no tariffs, all right? But Canada is not aligned to EU rules. So that presumably means, on a random basis, some Canadian goods get checked. Well, yeah, I mean, I think as long as for import export, I mean, everyone's still going to stay aligning to Europe and they for stuff with the rest of the world. We can then diverge and do separate things, but they're still going to have to be the borders. But the problem we've got is Boris has already said to the EU that when we was going to leave with no deal at the end of October, we're going to do one year off free tariff with the whole world for like over 70% of goods yeah. so he's not in a very good negotiating position because they know they're going to put their heels in the ground, they're going to force us to leave and we're going to offer them this one year tariff free just one way so basically they can still send all the stuff to the UK tariff free but we'll get well, stuff to let's, Yeah, I mean this was talked about before. Matthew, let's see where we end up but, but, I mean, but do you at least have some confidence in this British government to, to, to do a reasonable deal? Well, yeah, I mean, I think as long as we mustn't put obstacles in the ground like fish and everything, in the future that could change in due course. We could start getting some rights back. But, I mean, the UK is not geared up to start doing all that fishing and everything. So on a temporary basis, we've got to let them well, keep well, that. Well, Matthew, everything. Matthew, as long as there are territorial waters... And if we haven't got enough boats, because we haven't built enough, because it's been in decline, but hey, well, wouldn't that be great to see the boat building industry boom? Of course we can let foreign vessels fish in our waters, under licence, under our rules. That's the point. Matthew, thank you for your call. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's now 10.31, and time for the news with Thomas Watts. Boris Johnson will use a speech tomorrow to insist that no achievement lies beyond the UK's reach. The Prime Minister will say he won't accept alignment with EU rules in post-Brexit trade talks. Eleven British people are due to arrive back from China to join 83 UK nationals who are in quarantine on Merseyside. It's as a man in the Philippines has become the first person to die from the virus outside China. 
The US has approved what's believed to be the first treatment for peanut allergies in children. It's designed to gradually reduce sensitivity by increasing exposure to peanut protein over six months. LBC weather. Rain across many southern and central areas. Showers pushing north through the day, followed by brighter skies, a high of 13 degrees. This is LBC. I am a force for good. I am a force for courage. And for calm. I am a force for safety. For fairness. For leadership. I am a force for the future. For compassion. For my community. I am a police officer. And I am a force for all. Be one of the 20,000 new police officers and be a force for all that you believe in. Search Join the Police. You can always trust that song about a little shark to get the kids in the bath. But all it takes is a bit of faulty plumbing to set off the bedtime waterworks. Thankfully, at TrustedTrader.com, you can hunt out plenty of vetted, reviewed, reliable professionals in an abundance of trades. Like a plumber who'll rescue bath time. <laughs> and just like that, it's safe to go back in the water. Trust a trader. Keep coming, yeah, a bit more, a bit more. At Haycar, you'll find the best used cars all in one place. Every car is quality checked and comes with a warranty. So finding your perfect used car is easy. You just need somewhere to park it. Back, back, whoa, 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 yeah, great, stop, stop, stop. To find your perfect used car, search Haycar. What does the future of recruitment look like? Find out at the free-to-attend Recruitment Agency Expo at Olympia London. Discover new trends and how to capitalise on them. Tap into the latest innovations, services and technology. And take part in over 50 free seminar sessions. Future-proof your agency at the Recruitment Agency Expo. Coming to Olympia London on the 4th and 5th of February. Register for free entry at recruitmentagencyexpo.com When did the word free stop meaning free? Buy one, get one free. Wait six months and then it's free. How about something a little more clear? When you buy car or home insurance, you can choose a free gift with Confuse.com rewards, like green flag breakdown cover, a £20 Domino's or Halfords voucher, or a Now TV pass. Don't be confused. Be Confuse.com. Available on single annual policies, now TV 18 plus, full T's and C's online. <coughs> Hello? It's time you swapped your daily grind for some sun, sea and salsa! Sangria! Sun lounger! Siesta! Salsa! The dip! Sandal! Santa lotion! Uh, we've done salsa, right? We've... In the Seychelles, Spain or anywhere else in the world at surprisingly low prices. When you need a holiday, it's time to travel Republic. Book with confidence at all protected. This is LBC, the Nigel Farage Show. Call 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. What do you want to see Boris do in these trade talks? And isn't it interesting that fishing has cropped up already? The constant attempts by our media, parts of our media, to say, forget fishing, it doesn't matter. Do you know what? We're an island. It does matter. Uh, and already Michael says to me on Facebook, my understanding is that fishing boundaries are in dispute. Proud of the EU, the waters between Britain and Ireland. Well, look, there were all sorts, before we joined the EU, all sorts of disputes over what was what in terms of fishing. Generally, the rule was that there was a 12-mile limit that was the exclusive economic zone of the nation. However, at the same time we joined the common market, as it was called, we were engaged in the Cod Wars up in Iceland. And I say Cod Wars, I mean, actually shots were fired. I mean, this was, we were going out from Hull and Grimsby into Icelandic waters, catching vast quantities of cod, haddock, whiting, etc. The Icelandic said, go to hell, um, and they won. And in 1976, the rules of the sea internationally were redefined, and it became a 200-mile limit or the median line. That's why in the Falklands War of 1982, Mrs Thatcher put a 200-mile exclusion zone on the Falklands, because under international law, you know, that was the number she could quote. So the argument goes that, all right, 
you know, 200 miles off Dover doesn't get you very far, but 12 and a half miles off Dover is what would, in theory, exclusively be yours. But clearly, there's going to be crisscrossing in areas like that. But think about the northeast of Scotland. Think about the Shetlands. Think about places like that. You have a 200-mile exclusive economic zone. That I mean, boy, you've got something really very, very exciting. Um, and there's something more about fishing, about the economics of it. I mean, some estimates say we could be better off by £6 billion a year with our fishing waters back. But whether, whether it's... 2 billion or 10 billion isn't really the argument. There's a symbolism about this as an island nation that I do think matters deep to a lot of Brexiteers. Terry says it's a pivotal year. I'm hoping we leave on WTO in December. Well, Terry, some say that the so-called no deal, there's no such thing as no deal, but some are saying that a form of WTO may well be back on the table. I, I doubt that. I think there is going to be an accommodation of some kind. The question is, how much does Boris get and how much does Boris give? Ben is a first-time caller to this show from Leicester. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. So what do you want to see, Ben? Uh, I'd like to just make sure that we don't have um, <coughs> chlorinated chicken and just terrible food standards if we uh, get a trade deal with the US. Right. Do you buy salad, Ben, at all? or? Of course, yep, yep. And are you worried about the chlorine that's used to wash those salads? Not particularly, no. Oh, why? So why are you worried about chlorine in, if, if chickens are washed with chlorine? Well, because, I don't, because I'm sure it could have a lot of negative health impacts. Well, what about the parts of this country where, without anyone being consulted, they've put chlorine in the drinking water because it improves people's teeth? Mm, that, that's not. That's definitely not good, and I don't think it should be there either. I think Fun the only thing that should be in water is the mineral. Funny enough, Ben, nor do I. I think that to have put chlorine in the water, millions of people drink chlorinated water every day and don't even know it, and it may have a benefit for their teeth. It may do. I'm, I'm told it does. Uh, but I agree with you, Ben. It shouldn't have been done without some sort of consultation, but it has. Ben, look, let me put it to you like this. The If, if after a free trade deal, the Americans want to sell their chicken in British supermarkets, right? Mm. Oh, and by the way, bear in mind that if you go out and buy a chicken sandwich today, it will likely have been raised in Taiwan and shipped in here, all right? And goodness only knows what the standards in Thailand, Taiwan, anywhere are, I don't know. But, Ben, provided there's a label on that yep. piece of chicken or on that chicken that says, you know, product from the United States of America, you know, this product has been washed with chlorine. Provided there's labelling, what would your problem be? My problem would be that even with the chlorine in the, or even with the labelling, people are still going to buy it and it's still not good for you. Cigarettes, I mean, aren't, it's, cigarettes aren't good for you, Ben, but I bought a packet on the way in this morning. Mm, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I just all, I, all I'm saying to you, Ben, is I know there's been concern raised over this, <laughs> uh, but I think I, I personally think that with the right labelling, it's not an issue. And I mean, you're obviously talking about the USA here. What about as far as Europe's concerned? You know, I mean, should Boris go in tough? I think he should go in tough. Yeah. Well, let's hope he does. Ben, I thank you. And yeah, fishing, you see, it, it really is interesting. The politicians don't think this matters. You here on LBC as listeners this Sunday morning clearly do, because I'm being bombarded with fishing. Frankie says fishing is very important indeed. Fishing is a huge people investment that is worth making. Well, you know, the number of jobs we could bring back. We've lost about 100,000 jobs in fishing and fishing-related industries since we joined the common market. And I was amazed. When I was up in, in Grimsby during the election campaign, and I, I held up a haddock, and then Boris went there two weeks later and did the same thing. But, hey, what was interesting was big filleting factories, big packaging factories, big smoking sheds. Uh, and, a lot, you know, still quite a lot of people working in processing in, in Grimsby and doing it very well. What was interesting was nearly all the fish, I mean, over 90% of the fish processed there comes in from Iceland, and yet there's plenty of cod and haddock in that part of the North Sea. I mean, it just does not make sense to me. Oh, yes, fishing matters to an island, says Lindy, but don't let the 70s cod wars be repeated. Now, Lindy, there are often still today big disputes between French and British fishermen in that channel. It's a very, very na relatively narrow um, relatively narrow stretch of water. Uh, we've had scallop wars. We've had all sorts of, you know, I've heard of stories of even actually sort of mini French invasion 
on Dungeness a few years ago when they were very angry about something the British fleet were doing and we get very upset with them. Uh, there will always be, in areas like that, problems. But, in, you know, but, but, but frankly, you know, uh, off the western approaches and the northeast of Scotland, there should be far fewer difficulties. But it's just interesting, interesting, the passion I'm getting from this. Let's go to the seaside and speak to Christina in Eastbourne. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, Nigel. Um, very quickly, I'd just like to say a huge thank you for everything you've done. Everything today that we are seeing now is because of you. A warm thank you from the bottom well, of my heart. Well, Christina, I did, worry, uh, I, I did worry at times during that 27-year journey whether it would be worth it, but I think now, but we, it, is, I think now it is worth it, and, and we're we out. Have a candle in our window. We held a candle in our window always for you and for oh, what you were doing as a well, steadfast thank light. So thank now, you. As, uh, uh, now, as to uh, what I'd like to see in trades first... Yep. I'd like to see um, a ban on the live export of animals because you're talking about animal welfare. And yes. I'd like to, now we're not part of the EU rules, I'd like to see a total ban on the religious slaughter of animals. We cannot call ourselves a compassionate society and allow an animal to die in pain and terror just for the sake of some Okay, well, there are two, two separate issues there, Christina. Let, yeah. Let's deal with the live export of animals. Now, yeah. are you talking about a total ban? Um, absolutely. There's no need. We, we have well, our own standards well, I'm, I'm, of I'm, 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 Okay, well, let me say this to you. Mm. I, I think the vast majority of people are against lambs and sheep being put on yep. to transport, taken to France, because then they can graze in France in a field for two weeks, be slaughtered and then called French yep. lamb. All right, mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I think most people want that trade stopped. Clearly, that would mean some readjustments for elements of our sheep industry, and they'd be nervous of it. But, I, you know, that is something we can do. What you can't do, Christina, is have a total yeah. ban on a live export of animals. What no. about what about racehorses going to run in the Arc de Triomphe? No, 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 I mean for slaughter. For slaughter, OK, for slaughter. Yeah. You were specific. Fine, and, and OK. Then the, yes, and the religious thing. Now the, second, now, the second thing I'd like to see is the ban of red tape. Do you know what the first thing I'm going to do when we come out of this transitional period? Go I'm on. going to buy a light bulb you can see from outer space and a vacuum cleaner that'll suck up the air. <laughs> yeah, I, I would like a light bulb. <laughs> I would like a light bulb I could actually read by, because I guess I'm getting a bit older and my eyes aren't as good as they were. Yeah, no, Tell I'm, me. About it. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely with you. Christina, thank you very much indeed. I tell you what's interesting here, folks. Take that issue of the export of live animals. It is something that that genuinely vexes a lot of people to a huge degree, and they've been campaigning and turning up at ports where live exports have gone from. And, and she's right, live export for slaughter. That's what people want banned. And and yet, they've been wasting their time. There's no point talking to the Prime Minister, no point talking to your MP, no point signing a petition, because we couldn't do anything, because it was all decided in Brussels. I spoke to, I had a phone call yesterday from a representative of the fishing industry. I said, for the first time in 50 years, you've now got power, because we have got to make these decisions. There will be, in future, no hiding from government ministers or members of parliament. Brexit makes them directly accountable for what goes right and goes wrong in this country. No longer can they say, don't blame me, it wasn't my fault. I tried, I made the arguments, but Brussels decided. That argument has gone, that shelving of responsibility has gone. We are now in charge of our own destiny. And if we get things wrong, or if the public are angry, you can go and tell your MP, and, they, and, and you can hold them directly to account. No more hiding for British politicians. Democracy, more real than it's been in 50 years. I think that's pretty exciting. You're listening to the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It is 10.45. Sheila Fogarty, Monday to Friday from 1pm. You took your son out of his school because of knives. His mum went through his iPad and his text messages and found disturbing message logs saying that someone at his school is going to get murdered. If they'd minimise this in any way, that is really, really troubling. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. New Year calling for a new kitchen? Get to B&Q for up to five years interest-free credit with no deposit on our new kitchen range. Hurry, offer ends 2nd of February. You can do it when you B&Q it. Minimum spend £8,500 for five years interest-free credit. Credit subject to status. B&Q PLC is a credit broker and works exclusively with the Tarchi Capital UK PLC, both authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. As a small business owner, I need to know that when I'm out on business, I'm not closed for business. I no longer need an office. Just, um... 
a little peace and quiet at the boardroom table, which is also the coffee shop table. At O2, we get small businesses. That's why you can work from anywhere on the best business network. Search O2 Business or visit an O2 shop. 2019 Mobile Industry Awards terms apply. See o2.co.uk slash terms. I didn't think anything could surprise me anymore until I saw the Norwegian fjords. I was lost for words. <laughs> That's a first. Actually, there have been a few firsts this week. A first ride on a zip line. My first time in a kayak alongside waterfalls and glaciers. My first visit to an ancient Nordic village and my first encounter with an actual Viking. <laughs> Big softies, really. There's no better way to get to the heart of the fjords than on a P&O Cruises holiday. Seven nights on our new ship Iona from 749 per person. P&O Cruises. Subject to availability based on early saver geo 19 pf grade condition supply. I'm Captain Obvious, and every day people book trips on Hotels.com that you will later hate like. A hate like is when you like Becky's picture of another waterfall even though you kind of hate it because she's there and you're on the train next to a mouth breather. Don't hate like Becky's trip. Book your own with Hotels.com. Hotels.com. Be there. Do that. At the Bank of Antandek, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I'm try not to mumble. Play it. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments on your mortgage. Little Red Riding Hood has been trying to sell her grandma's home for some time now, but the estate agent's shining, sharp teeth have left her with sweat on her brow. Oh, trust me, darling. I just want what's best for you. Hence the added fees. <laughs> However, she spoke to the friendly team at Property Rescue, who cut out the middleman and guaranteed a sale in as little as 48 hours with no fees whatsoever. Fast forward to living happily ever after. Visit propertyrescue.com. Co.uk. Property Rescue. Fast forward to sold. How often should you think about your boiler? The correct answer is as little as possible. But if it's been playing up recently, it could be on its last legs. And at this time of year, well, that doesn't bear thinking about. But the good news is a reliable new valent boiler comes with a guarantee of up to 10 years and could use 30% less gas than a hungry old boiler. Plus, right now, there's a £100 John Lewis voucher for the first 500 installations. Now that's comforting. To claim your voucher, just text RADIO to 60300 and we'll call you back. For full terms and conditions, visit valent.co.uk. Text messages charged at your standard network rate. Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Tweet at LBC using the hashtag Farage on LBC. These EU bureaucrats, their bitterness never goes away. Now, Donald Tusk, I said to you earlier in the show, had said he doesn't see the UK rejoining the European Union. So far, so good. But then he goes on to say that he feels empathy towards an independent Scotland joining the European Union. How very, very helpful. I'm sure Nicola Sturgeon is very pleased you're doing her bidding. He did say, of course, they may not be automatically accepted, and given the state of Scottish finances, there's no chance they would be. So if Scotland wants to join, they would have to go through austerity on a scale you cannot even imagine. Uh, but interesting. I wonder whether... I wonder whether the Spanish government enjoy those comments with the separatist tendencies of Catalonia and other places. It's just pure anti-Britishness we're getting from Tusk. Uh, really, a very bitter man indeed. Let's listen to his comments last year about Brexiteers. I've been wondering what that special place in hell looks like for those who promoted uh, Brexit. Oh, 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 do you know... Nothing pleases me more about Brexit. Nothing pleases me more about losing my job as an MEP, which I did at 11 o'clock on Friday night. Nothing pleases me more than not having to go back to Brussels. The thing that pleases me the most is I won't have to see people like Mr Tusk ever again. They really have been vile over the last three and a half years. Not just to me. I mean, I'm fair game. That's fine. But towards... I mean, I didn't support Mrs May particularly in, as Prime Minister, but to see our Prime Minister being mocked and humiliated by these people. Enough! And Boris is sounding tough. He's saying the right things. No regulatory alignment. No European Court of Justice. No extension to transition. And, of course, in a way, 
his entire political legacy and history will depend on whether he can keep to those three demands. It's going to be very interesting. Patricia is a first-time caller from Munich in Germany. Patricia, good morning. Hello. Good morning. So, Welcome. Uh, I just wanted to uh, say thank you. The, I, I hope that more um, countries will, will follow. The problem here is that um, if people dare to criticize the EU, EU or Merkel or government, they um, they are silenced. You know, they call us Nazis or fascists or mm. extreme right, mm. right or the undemocratic uh, undemocratic persons. So um, yeah, the pe- people are afraid. Um, the propaganda from the media and the government is very strong here. So I think, yeah, I, I think Germany, yeah, will be the, will be the last country to leave. To yeah, I think I think with the historical legacy, that's true. But your comment about the media, Patricia, is really interesting. <laughs> A lot of people in my country complain about the newspapers, but the truth about our newspapers is that we have newspapers that reflect all shades of opinion on this and many other issues. And, and of course, we have stations like LBC, which allow people from all sides of an argument, indeed even different presenters with different views on these subjects. And what I've seen of German press and much of French press too is they literally, Patricia, they all agree, don't they? Yeah, uh, the press here is totally left and green. So we have the Green Party, and it's totally left and green, really. And they, they bash uh, AFD, and all that's right. They, they, they say all oh, people that uh, are right, right wing, they are the bad one. Yes, you know? Al- although isn't so, bi- isn't build perhaps a slight exception, which is sort of your equivalent of our Sun newspaper? They're a bit more critical of the EU, aren't they? Yeah, I, I think um, other from other countries, the media is a little bit more critical. But here, really, almost all media, really all, mm, mm. are left. Yeah, it's it's, it, it get, it's getting worse every day. Patricia, would you like to see Germany as an independent country? To be honest, I don't know. I don't know what what consequences we will uh, get from this. Um, and I think that the people. Um, they are confused because, they're, they're, as I said, the propaganda is so strong so the people don't, don't know what, what they have to um, think about this. No, listen, you've made a very good point. But, Patricia, remember, there is always social media these days which does allow people to get round the back of the mainstream. Thank you. Your messages pouring in. This tale of unremitting ignorance called Brexit is unfolding as well as can be expected for a blind Brexit. That's an Alistair Campbell term, isn't it? A vote for the unknown to replace the imperfect, alienate. Half the English and all the Scots and Irish voted for. Fish, dream on, says Nick. Well, some people don't accept this, but a lot of people do accept this, including Tony Blair. Um, And what's the point, Nick, in just being bitter about the whole thing? Well, you know, I I, um, I can see some of you are actually angry. The EU wasn't perfect, but it could have been reformed by negotiation, says Matt. Oh, that's magnificent. You've messed everything up. You should have stuck to TV comedy. Matt, Matt, do you honestly think after 47 years of trying to reform the common agricultural policy and getting precisely nowhere that we should have carried on trying to reform. And, you know, in that debate last Wednesday, my last debate in the European Parliament, people were talking about reform, by which they mean deeper centralisation and, as Verhofstadt said, no more opt-outs from anything. Anyone that's a member of the EU in future, according to Verhofstadt, has to be in the European defence, has to be in the European single currency. They are being absolutely insistent about it. The EU will never change tack. They will continue to be driven by a desire to punish us in order to deter others. Laura, I think that has been uppermost in their mind and indeed in that debate on Wednesday a lot a lot were saying well who's next you know who is next they're all very worried is it is it Poland is it Italy is it Denmark Um, we're not quite there yet in any of those cases but the debates are beginning to happen but this I but I just felt for the first time ever that actually in that in that my last day there that they're now a bit more scared of us than we are of them and and as and with Italy in recession with Germany well, I, th- I think they fiddled the figures, to be honest with you, because it's sort of, you know, virtually in recession. They sell us an awful lot of motor cars. Let's go to Barry, who's a first-time caller to LBC from Alicante in Spain. Barry, good morning. How are we doing, Nigel? You're OK. Yeah, I'm fine. And you? Now, do you live in Alicante full-time? 
Uh, no, I'm backwards and forwards to the UK, but uh, most of my time spent in Alicante, yeah. Right, OK. And how does Brexit look from Alicante? Awful, Nigel, awful, I've got to say. Uh, we've been told to apply for a new driving licence. Yeah. Because now, my, apparently, our English driving licence isn't good enough over here. So, I mean, I, d- I don't know what uh, what your opinion is, Nigel. I'd just like to ask you, do you realise what you've done to the nation back home? I mean, the, there's... Well, you're there's in Alicante, who... Barry. You're in Alicante. I mean, there's no change to British driving licences, is there? Other than that wretched EU flag will be taken off them, won't it? Well, the, well, this is what they're telling me here, Nigel. I've got to apply for this for, the, for this licence, but it's not, it's not really the licence that's, that's my main gripe, Nigel. Right. The problem is that back home, the people that built this nation after the Second World War are, are, are now feeling unwelcome. That's the general thing that I'm getting, Nigel. And also, I'd like to say that when I do Barry. move back home, I'll be taking my small family and uh, my two 11-year-old daughters, and I'll be moving to somewhere nice, somewhere vibrant with a lot of immigrants, just to let them know that we're not all these horrible Barry, you are racists. talking. You are talking utter bilge. If you want to talk about, well, look, if you want to talk about optimism, right, um, effervescence yeah. and energy, I suggest you get back to the UK as quickly as you can. There well, is, I plan there to, is, Nigel. There I is, plan to. There and is extraordinary do... optimism out there right now. Well, I plan to move back, Nigel, and when I do, just to let the, the immigrant community of the UK know, I'll be taking my small family and my two 11-year-old daughters, and I'll be moving directly to the centre of Rotherham, just to let them know that, you know, some of us don't care about these stereotypes, and we're, we're, willing, to, we're willing to sacrifice our children upon the altar of multiculturalism, well, just to make the, Barry, the Barry, utopian I, dream Barry, work. Yeah, I've had enough of this. Goodbye. Um, right, that was not very helpful or constructive or sensible at all. Lorraine says, we are an island! Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Fisheries, no brainer. Come on, our biggest food source. Well, at the moment, Lorraine, it's a long way from being our biggest food source because the Brits, despite being an island, culturally, we've just stopped eating fish, perhaps in the way that we used to. Um, I doubt, I doubt most people today could even tell the difference between a mackerel and a herring if, if, it, if it was placed in front of them. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll start eating more fish caught in UK waters, and that might be really quite a good thing from every perspective. Right, now we are, uh, we are now going to move on because Tony Blair, Tony Blair, let's have a listen to what I said about Tony Blair the other night. Tony Blair! But I'm going to surprise you. Well, so, I mentioned the name Tony Blair. There's 100,000 Brexiteers in Parliament Square. It feels like VE Day. You mention Blair, they all go bonkers. They hate Tony Blair. But actually, Tony Blair has said something really constructive. Is it time Brexiteers forgave Tony Blair for his sins? He wanted us to join the single currency. But now he says we've got to make the best of Brexit. And it would be ridiculous to try and rejoin. Should we forgive him? On your radio, on Global Player, and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation, this is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 11 o'clock, 11 British people are due to arrive back from the coronavirus-hit city of Wuhan in China. The second group of British evacuees are on board a French flight. They'll go into quarantine with 83 people who arrived in the UK on Friday. British teacher Khan Lambert is among those spending a fortnight at Arrow Park Hospital on the Wirral. The information we're being given at the moment is that we should try to stay as isolated as possible, um, but we are free to move around and... uh, We can talk to each other. But, you know, everyone's been sensible here. Everyone's taken the necessary precautions. A man in the Philippines who was from Wuhan has become the first person to die from the virus outside China. Boris Johnson is expected to insist the UK will accept no concessions and no alignment with EU rules in post-Brexit trade talks. The Prime Minister will set out his tougher stance on negotiations in a speech in London tomorrow. He'll say the UK is prepared to accept some border checks on goods from the EU. Northern Ireland's First Minister Arlene Foster says she'll be seeking clarity on that issue. We rely heavily on goods coming from Great Britain into Northern Ireland. I think about 70% of all the goods that come over come from Great Britain. And of course we're concerned about that. We worry about the fact that it might reduce our choice in terms of consumer choice in Northern Ireland.
Emergency crews say they've brought under control a major fire in London's historic Law District. Around 155 fighters were called to the Law Society's building on Chancery Lane last night. Nick Codling reports. The London Fire Brigade are due to remain here in Hoban, putting out the remnants of the fire while trying to minimise damage to this historic building. They were first called at around 10.40 last night and at its height 150 firefighters were needed to tackle the blaze. The fire service say it's been a very complex fire to tackle due to the layout of the building. Nick Codling, LBC, Hoban. The Prince of Wales has been criticised for travelling by helicopter to make a speech about lowering aircraft emissions. Charles flew from Highgrove to Cambridge, a journey of 125 miles. Clarence House says the Prince ensures all of his carbon emissions are offset every year. LBC weather, rain across many southern and central areas, then showers will push north through the day, followed by brighter skies. Some wintry showers in Scotland, a high of 13 degrees. From Global's Newsroom, for LBC, I'm Thomas Watts. Send message to Elise. Salut, sorry, I'm running late. Just in the car now. Send. Ah, I forgot the cake. Send. Actually, great news. Satnav has found a new route. See you in 10. Message on the move in the Citroen C1 and stay connected. Experience Citroen C1. Available from £149 per month with initial rental of £149. Citroen. Please drive responsibly. Citroen UK Limited is a credit broker, not a lender. Personal lease. You will not own the vehicle. Offer on field VTI 72.5 speed manual. 6,000 miles per annum. Guarantee may be required. Terms, eligibility criteria and return conditions apply. PSA Finance UK Limited. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation. The Nigel Farage Show. So it was Friday night. There we were in Parliament Square. It had rained like crazy from about 6 to about 6.45. And I was really worried because it began to look like it could get a bit muddy. And people were congregating. I, I bumped into a gang outside the LBC studio. who would come down from Barnsley and... They were in what could only be termed high spirits. The day had started early in lots of ways. Um, and uh, in the end, the skies cleared and it was mild, a bit of a breeze, and it was a lovely, lovely evening. And I don't know how many were there, 100,000, whatever. I mean, had it been an Alistair Campbell get-together, he'd have said 2 million. I've got no doubt about that. Um, but there was a really big buzz and people waving flags and some people had dressed up. And it was a real, a real you know, it wasn't political. It wasn't meant to be political, it was meant to be a celebration, a celebration of the fact that a big moment in history was about to happen at 11 o'clock, and a celebration that a peasant's revolt had beaten the establishment, overturned the establishment, and now we have a Conservative Party who I fought against for almost 30 years, because they always were the party most keen on the European project, who now sound like me. So there's a lot to celebrate. But something happened on Friday that I thought was really really significant and I don't think it's had the coverage that it needs to have. Now Tony Blair and I have never agreed on anything and indeed in 2005 when he had the six months presidency as it used to be then before Mr Van Rompuy and people like that Ken Tuss came along he was for six months the president of the European Union and it started off in with high hopes and you know, Tony turned up at the European Parliament and charmed them all because because he is a brilliant speaker. I mean, whatever you think of his politics, like him or not, he's a brilliant speaker, very good at persuading people. And by the end of it, it was a disaster. He'd given away £7 billion of the UK rebate in return for a promise that the French would consider a review of the common agricultural policy, which, of course, led to now. Uh, and it finished up in the end with him shouting at me and going absolutely berserk. So he and I have never seen eye to eye on anything. And yet, on Friday, well, I think what he said on Friday really, really matters. You know, he said, look, we are leaving. We must accept it. We must make the best of Brexit. And he warned people against looking back and trying to launch campaigns to get us to rejoin the EU. So he's a practical, ultimately practical, sensible bloke. He recognises we're never going to rejoin. To campaign for that politically would be absolute suicide. And even he wants us to make the best of Brexit. And I thought that was the most significant comment made by anybody on the Remain side. So here I was talking to the crowd, and this is at about 10 minutes to 11 on Friday night in Parliament Square. An amazing thing has happened today. Tony Blair. Ah. But 
I'm going to surprise you. I really am going to surprise you. Tony Blair has said today, there is no point looking back. We've made a decision. We are leaving the European Union and we must work together to make it a success. How about that? The crowd cheering Tony Blair, just about. A crowd of Brexiteers cheer Tony Blair. How about that? Well, now look, the boos were louder than the cheers, I accept, and it was quite difficult for some people to take in what I was saying, but I said it because I think if Tony Blair is going to be conciliatory, if we're going to put the fact we've left the European Union behind us and then get on with the shape of our future relationship with the EU and the rest of the world, that is a positive. I forgive you, Tony Blair, even though in 2005, in the European Parliament, you addressed these comments to me. This is the year 2005. This is the year 2005, not 1945. We're not fighting each other anymore. These are our partners, they're our colleagues, and our future lies in Europe. And when, when, you, and your, when you and your colleagues say, what do we get? in return for what we contribute to enlargement. I tell you what we get. We get a Europe that is he unified was, after years of dictatorship in the me. East. We get economic development in countries who we have championed. We get a future reform that allows us, once and for all, to put an end to discussion about rebates, common oh, agricultural yeah, that, that policy, happen, and get a proper that reform budget for Europe. That's that didn't what happen. we get if we had the vision to seize that opportunity. Yeah, and he went on, he went on to say, you may sit behind your flag, but you don't represent our country, and jabbing his finger. And what I loved was, he was absolutely red in the face when he was doing it, furious. He'd been up all night. He'd been up all night negotiating with the French. He'd been outclassed and outplayed, and he was not a happy bunny. But Tony Blair, I'm going to forgive you everything. Well, pretty much everything. Maybe not. Maybe not the dodgy dossier on Iraq, or I, I don't think we can forgive you or Campbell for that one particularly, but I forgive you everything, because if you're now saying it's time for the country to heal, let's move forward, let's make the best of it, let's make it a success, let's not try and rejoin or anything silly like that, I think that is good news. I wonder what you make of that. Simon is a first-time caller to LBC from Guildford. Good morning, Simon. Good morning, so, uh, good afternoon, Nigel. Uh, I've got three points to make Go uh, very briefly. Firstly, uh, congratulations. It's an absolute thrill talking to you. I think what you've achieved in the last 20, 25 years is genuinely extraordinary. We lack conviction politicians in this country and around the world. And uh, I, I think you should, well, obviously you've given yourself a pat on the back, but collectively, on behalf of Leavers and, and others, um, I just want to congratulate That's you. That's very the kind. Second point, yep. The second point on Tony Blair. Um, I, I personally can't really forgive him. I think I, think I, would, I would welcome his comments cautiously. I think he's a little bit of a magpie. I think his ego attracts him to what is current at the moment. And I think he, he recognises that he's lost the argument and he now needs to get on board with the argument. So I think I, I welcome his thoughts, but with some caution. But I don't necessarily regard that as forgiveness. Mm, but I've actually okay. got a question for you, Nigel. I don't want to sort of get off the point. But Go on. When, when, in your opinion... Did we lose our collective national mojo? Because oh. I speak to I speak to a lot of my colleagues at work um, who seem to think that we're you know we're going off a cliff and and they almost seem to view the ne events over the next three to five years as sitting back and waiting to see what happens. Wow. And there's there's a point that you've made consistently, but I don't think it's really cottoned on for people, and I don't know why. And that is. We've now got destiny in our own hands, and that is yep. really, yep. really exciting. Yep. Absolutely. And I'm, just, I'm curious. This so this this loss of confidence. This okay, okay. Psyche this has, loss has, of confidence. Has, 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 exactly. So I mentioned Tony Abbott earlier, the former Australian Prime Minister. He's also a great historian. And, and he says that Britain's almost been in managed decline since the end of the First World War. Uh, right. Uh, that's his longer-term point. I, whether I agree with that or not, I'm not totally sure. But let me tell you, there was an absolute moment that happened that changed our place in the world and changed our view of ourselves, and it was the Suez Crisis of 1956. The Suez Crisis led to the most almighty bust-up 
with the United States of America. Uh, and it led, don't forget, Eden was the Prime Minister, keen on going in, using military means to retake the Suez Canal. Macmillan, the Chancellor, had supported him every inch of the way until Macmillan could see the Americans withdrawing support, pressure coming on the pound. And then Macmillan went the other way. Eden was left exposed, resigned, disappeared from public life. Macmillan takes over and makes a decision. He makes a decision that this is it. The empire's got to go. Everything's got to go. I mean, even though he was offered, for example, I mean, you know, Malta said to him, look, we don't want to be a colony, but we're quite happy to become part of the United Kingdom. We're quite, we're quite happy to be really with you and have an MP in Parliament. No, 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 no. It was to get rid of as much of it as they possibly can. And guess who made the application to join the EEC in 1961? It was Harold Macmillan. And ever since Suez, it has been managed decline. The only Prime Minister in that intervening period that genuinely thought we could and should be an independent nation, and it took her a long time to reach that conclusion, was Margaret Thatcher. It's been managed, declined since Suez, Simon. So I think, so I think your point about Tony Blair is a very interesting one. I, I, I would say, let's see what he's saying in the next six to 12 months, because this is my, my only slight fear, is that Boris and, and, and the, his team are going to face challenges. Of course, negotiating with Europe, as we know, isn't going to be easy. Um, and it's a question of, of, you know, are we going to just bend like collective saplings in the breeze of difficulty, or are we going to stand firm like, like mm. the oak trees that we should be? Mm. Um, and, and so my, my comments about Tony Blair are this, okay. is that when we, when, we, when, we, when we enter a little bit of a European headwind, as we will on fisheries, etc., where, where will he be then? Will he still be backing and supporting them? Which I think is positive. So, I, so okay. I'm, I'm guardedly... Simon, I, I'm think guardedly you're, I think you're very wise. And I think, you know, when I talk about forgiveness, I'm sort of ever so slightly teasing, really. But I do think... I, do, I did think on Friday it was significant. And I do think there is generally a coming together. But as you say, we must keep an eye on him as ever. Simon, do call LBC again. Great call. Lots and lots of passion. Mo from Plymouth says, Nigel, don't be taken in by Tony Blair. I think he's trying to save his own skin. Well, Mo, I mean, who's to say? Maybe he sees himself as a future Labour leader. I'm teasing just a little bit. Uh, Roman is a first-time caller to me from Rislip. Good morning. Hi, Nigel. Can you hear me? I certainly can. The floor is yours. Yeah, good morning. Uh, a quick comment on the previous caller. Uh, I mean, if we look at the UK since the 60s, I mean, uh, managed decline isn't really, I think, what describes it the best. There's been, OK, up and downs, but I think overall it's been rather a success story. Uh, and it's just the empire, there was a transition, you know, the sure. U.S. have been the leading power, now there's a rise of China, but the, the world moves on. Uh, but back to Tony Blair, uh, I think the question, in a way, is a bit cheeky, because I think, you know, Brexit, you, it's all about promoting a vibrant democracy in the U.K. Yes. I, don't see, I don't think Tony Blair has done anything that was outside the bound of what a healthy democracy is. I, he's fought for what he believed was right. Uh, and he's done this in, you know, in a perfectly legitimate and legal way. Oh, I, wa uh, Roman, uh, Roman, I, I wasn't the suggesting, by the way, I'll just stop you saying, I was not suggesting that Blair had ever behaved in, in an illegitimate way. I say there are question marks over Iraq, but, 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 but no, I mean, look, Blair has been the arch globalist, all right? He has believed that, you know, big supranational institutions working hand in glove with big businesses and very powerful bureaucracies, he believed that was the way the world was going. And indeed, it has been the direction that the world has been taken in. And what Brexit does, Roman, it says, oh, no, 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 this is all wrong. Actually, we want nation states, free markets and national democracy. And, and the reason that I was generous to him you know, on Friday night, is I do think the sooner we end this bitter division, and it has been a bitter division over Brexit, the better we'll be. Yeah, but absolutely. That's the point I'm making. So he, he's fought and within, now he said, well, actually, we've lost. And so he, he's just playing loser's consent. Yes, at, at last. Which is, yes. Three, at, exactly. Three and a half years too late, but he is well, at last. Fair doing enough. It. I mean, he, he's fought as long as he saw there was something to fight for. I mean, I, I think, look, Put it that way. I'm a French guy. I've been living in London for 20 years. Uh -huh. Love it. Going to ask for citizenship. Um, the, the, the way I'm looking at this is the journey the UK has been on for the past three years mm -hmm. 
the, the, the tension, the, the arguments in the families, the friendships that have been busted, etc. All of this done without a, a broken window or, or a car burnt. And then I look what's been going on in France for two years, right? Uh, I think the, this country is a, is a model yeah. of uh, you, you civilization know, you know, you know, and, and, and democracy. Do you know, I, I, I met a chap a few months ago up in Lincolnshire. It was at the Dan Busters pub up in Lincolnshire, right next to R.E.F. Scampton, amazing pub. And ch- chap said to me, he said, you know, Nigel, we're having a national row, and yet we're doing it in a relatively civilised way. And yeah, a bit of tension here and there, some horrible things said on the internet, but Roman, I agree with you. Compared to what's happening in France, it's a miracle how smooth it's been. Thank you. And by the way, we will be crossing to Paris just after the 11.30 news, to talk about events that took place there yesterday. I think the French problems in the city, the big city of Paris, are massively underreported by UK media. But for now, this is the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show, here on LBC, and it's 11.17. This is LBC. January is tough enough without a broken boiler. Keep your home warm and working this winter with two years interest-free credit and your boiler installed by one of our expert engineers. Plus, you'll get a five-year British gas warranty and we can even quote by video call after work or on weekends. Get a quote by the 29th of February and you can also get £200 off a new boiler or £400 off for our existing home care customers. Search British Gas New Boiler. Conditions apply. Start your Clio love story today. The new Renault Clio from Renault Retail Group. Now £179 a month with 0% APR. Find your nearest dealer at renaultretail.co.uk. 24 months Renault Finance. Deposit 2685. Optional final payment 7714. Conditions apply. At the Cooperative Bank, we're driven by something different. Because we've always believed that doing good and doing good business should go together which is why we've had a customer-led ethical policy for over 25 years. Putting your values at the heart of what we do and campaigning for what you think is right. Ethical then, ethical now. We're the original ethical bank. The Cooperative Bank. For people with purpose. Join us. This is your captain speaking. I'd like to welcome you on board today's flight. As we're currently behind schedule, we're going to skip all the pre-flight checks and just proceed with takeoff. I've given the tyres a kick and I think we've got enough fuel to get there and the oil warning light hasn't come on yet, so buckle up and enjoy the flight. You wouldn't fly without the proper checks, so why drive without them? Highways England recommends you check your tyres, fuel and oil before every long journey. For more information on vehicle safety checks, search THINK. Save 50% and subscribe to The Telegraph as Britain embarks on a bright new future. Treat yourself to a standard digital subscription in our Brexit sale. Pay just £25 for your first six months of intelligent insight and trusted opinion. Subscribe today at telegraph.co.uk. What does the future of recruitment look like? Find out at the free-to-attend Recruitment Agency Expo at Olympia London. Discover new trends and how to capitalise on them. Tap into the latest innovations, services and technology and take part in over 50 free seminar sessions. Future-proof your agency at the Recruitment Agency Expo. Coming to Olympia London on the 4th and 5th of February. Register for free entry at recruitmentagencyexpo.com. I am a force for good. I am a force for courage. And for calm. I am a force for safety. For fairness. For leadership. I am a force for the future. For compassion. For my community. I am a police officer. And I am a force for all. Be one of the 20,000 new police officers and be a force for all that you believe in. Search Join the Police. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 Well, amazing, really, isn't it? Tony Blair accepts the fact we're leaving and says we should not campaign to rejoin. And that's really interesting. And we talked in the first hour, didn't we, to people from all over Europe about would Brexit spark a much bigger debate, a civilised debate? And we've got a call this morning from Gothenburg, from Johan Ekberg, Member of Parliament in Sweden. Good morning to you. Hello, Nigel. Happy Brexit. Happy Brexit. Now, you're somebody pretty much in the political centre, I understand. Well, I have to correct you on that. I'm actually not a member of Parliament. 
Okay, right. Um, but I do, but I do have um, a direct line to members of parliament. And the debate in Sweden. I was doing Swedish media the other day, um, and I mean. I'm told that the idea that Sweden might leave is ludicrous by Swedish media. Do you think it's different? Yeah, I think it's different. I think that the media is quite biased in Sweden. It's of course, you know, I'm a Swedish conservative politician and a Eurosceptic. Yeah. So I have a different uh, view from the mainstream media. And you have to go a bit outside of the mainstream to find these views. You have to go on social media and on YouTube to find mm. these different kinds of views. Yeah, I mean, the set, there's also a fair degree of censorship, I know, on um, Swedish media in terms of crime and, 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 and what the origin of it is. Um, do you think Sweden is now going to have a debate, even if the newspapers and politicians don't want to? Do you think it will have a debate about its future? It's in happening. The it's happening, is Nigel. It? Is it? Yes. We are both drag on energy, you and I. Yep. Yeah, right. I started... I started a movement called the Sweden First Movement. Right. And it's a nationalist, Eurosceptic movement that unites members of the Moderate Party, mm -hmm. the Christian Democratic Party, and the Sweden Democrats. Okay, interesting. Well, look, we're, we're going to watch this space, and if you have interesting news from Sweden, do call us again. Thank you. Sticking with Tony Blair and going to Carlisle. Sandra, are you convinced by Tony Blair? No, not at all. Right. He's the worst. He's the worst Prime Minister we ever had. Mm -hmm. He went to war, which was illegal, and he invited the whole world here. So, no, I could never forgive Tony Blair. OK. Do you welcome, though, do you welcome the comments that he made on Friday? Well, I think he's got an ulterior motive. He probably wants to be the next leader of the Labour Party. <laughs> Interesting. You see, I, I said earlier, I joked about that earlier. I wonder, Sandra, I mean, clearly he's not in the current contest. Um, would he really, would he really at his age want to come back and do that? Oh, yes. He'd like, he'd like to be top dog. He's nothing at the moment. He'd like <laughs> to get his, himself in. Well, when, well. When, he, when he first came on the scene, I never liked him. I thought he was the Antichrist. And I still believe that. All right, Sandra, no forgiveness there at all. Uh, bad immigration policies. Iraq, no, she's not happy at all. Alan from Devon says, Blair is setting himself up to return to politics. A lot of you think this. Don't believe him, says Alan. Give not your forgiveness. Offer understanding. Your understanding has more value. Des... OK, I think that's a very, very intelligent comment. I really, really do. I was driving into Newcastle one morning last year, listening to LBC. A man phoned in to say that Tony Blair made him cringe. Apart from the obvious, he made the point that Blair is great at stating the obvious. That's all he does these days. I'll never forgive him for Iraq, says Richard from Cheltenham. Good morning, Sir Nigel. Some chance. Well, I agree with Blair. Isn't it a shame? This is the point to me. Isn't it a shame? He didn't say that straight after the result of the referendum. He and his ilk have done a lot of damage to our country. Doesn't make me think any higher of them, says Sharon in Bromley. Yes, and a previous caller talked about loser's consent. It's something you've heard me mentioning time and again over the last couple of years. Yeah, Tony Blair's given us loser's consent three and a half years later and after a huge amount of agony, parliamentary trench warfare and our reputation across the world well made to look a bit like a laughing stock now dave from frinton on sea has an idea he says nigel with the challenge of bringing everyone together would you share a stage with blair touring the country highlighting the positives of this great country <laughs> i think i've been asked a question i can't really give an answer to i don't know what to say goodness gracious me and part of the celebrations of course are the new commemorative 50 pence. There were 4,000 of these issued on Brexit Day. It says 31st of January 2020, a vote to leave and a new era. This coin struck on the 31st of January. I'm very pleased to have one of those 4,000 coins. Uh, but somehow, maybe Mr Blair will accept the 50p. There are others that won't accept the 50p. I'll talk about them a bit later on. I'm, because I'm beginning to think that those that can't accept the new 50p, those that send me bitter text messages, 
I think you're beginning to resemble members of the Flat Earth Society. I really, really do. Tom is a first-time caller to me from Creef up in Perthshire. Good morning to you. Good morning, Nigel. And like everyone else, my respect and admiration to you for everything you have done, all the nonsense you've put up with over so many years. Hats off to you, mate. Fantastic Thank result. You. Thank you. Isn't it funny, Tom? All the things that I was saying, and I'd be shouted at. I mean, well, every form, it's a Sunday morning, we won't use it, but every form of abuse, you know, I mean, if I, I mean, you know, if I'd said five years ago, I don't want us to align with EU rules, I don't want the ECJ to have oversight over our country, I mean, they'd all, I'd, I'd be a xenophobe, I'd be a little Englander. We've now got a British Prime Minister saying it, so the political weather has changed, and with it, conciliatory comments from Tony Blair. What do you make of them, Tom? Nigel, I, I've expressed my admiration. However, I do fear that perhaps you're getting a little carried away with the euphoria of the moment. Right. Put, if you believe Tony Blair, if you trust Tony Blair, especially on Brexit issues, it would be the equivalent of trusting the fabulous Mr. Fox to be in charge of your chicken coop. <laughs> Nigel, you're absolutely wrong on this, 100% wrong. Here is, the, here is the new strategy from the rejoiners, right? Mm -hmm. They have understood, Blair and Campbell have understood that taking us on face-to-face, -face, they have lost. They get that. So what they have decided to do is to come on the inside and consume the Brexiteer movement from the inside out by corrupting the debate. That is what they have done. And I am begging you, Nigel, begging you, please, please do not believe this man. He is the most sly creature who has ever inhabited the pol British political scene. He is a disaster, and please don't believe Well, Tom, him. I don't think he's going to infiltrate. You know, he's not going to infiltrate my close circle, I believe you, me, uh, and he's not going to infiltrate the Conservative Party. Um, you I said, your, Nigel, yeah. you said yourself that after 16, there was a kind of a pause and the whole thing fell away a little bit. It did a that bit, is yes. where they see the opportunity. Right. right. Well, I'm going to try and do my absolute best, Tom, to make sure that does, that, that does not happen this time round. I know there was, a, there was a, a sort of perception in 16 that I packed my tents and gone home and left everyone to get on with it. Um, I took the view that Theresa May was Prime Minister. There wasn't much I could do. She was saying all the right things. But this time, this time, Tom, no, I'm actually going to make sure, and I've spoken to other keen Brexiteers, that we will not allow the vacuum that existed last time to be there. I mentioned earlier about this Brexit Watch website that's being set up as part of a big think tank. So, Tom, we will keep the pressure on, and I promise you, we will not be corrupted or infiltrated by Tony Blair. Thank you for your call. It's interesting, isn't it? Blair arouses very, very strong passions. Bonnie says, TB would never be leader again, because the Labour Party is now the momentum party. Well, you might set a new one up, Bonnie. He might lead the new rebirth, attempt to break the mould with a new form of social democracy. After all, Roy Jenkins was not a young man when he did that. Robert says, Blair's ego is so warped and desperate for relevance and power that he'll think it's your talking about him, even with animosity, that makes him still a force. Forgive Blair, but never forget what he's done. Blair, only interested in saving his own skin. Uh, that, right, well, I, I was trying to be nice about him, but not many of the rest of you think I should be. All right, well, fair enough. Leo says, the Blair Witch Project is to infiltrate the Blexiteers. This theory is coming over loud and clear. I'm not sure I quite believe it, but there clearly is not much trust of Tony Blair. Time for a rest, I think. It's 11.30. Time for the news with Thomas Watts. A French repatriation flight is due to bring more British people home from the coronavirus-hit city of Wuhan. The second group of evacuees will go into isolation on the Wirral, with 83 people who arrived from China on Friday. The Foreign Secretary will travel to Japan and Australia next week to begin trade discussions. The Prime Minister will set out his tougher stance on post-Brexit trade talks in a speech in London tomorrow. Emergency crews say they've brought under control a major fire in London's historic law district. Around 150 firefighters were called to the Law Society building on Chancery Lane last night. LBC weather, rain across many southern and central areas, showers pushing north through the day, followed by brighter skies, a high of 13 degrees. 
This is LBC. Save 50% and subscribe to The Telegraph as Britain embarks on a bright new future. Treat yourself to a standard digital subscription in our Brexit sale. Pay just £25 for your first six months of intelligent insight and trusted opinion. Subscribe today at telegraph.co.uk. Standard. Stagnant. Same old, same old. That's not how you describe London. We're, well, different. London loves bright new ideas, embraces vibrant, evolving communities, and isn't afraid of standing out. We deserve an energy company that's as different as we are, one that's fair and affordable for all Londoners. London Power, a different kind of energy company. We live in an age where you can stream any box set instantly. But staying on top of our pensions is anything but instant. Pension B can transfer most old pensions together into one simple online plan. So you can manage your pension on your smartphone as simply as streaming that box set. Download the app or visit pensionb.com today. Authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Capital at risk. It's the Oak Furniture Land end of January sale with huge savings on 100% solid hardwood furniture for all around your home. So go online and in-store now and see how much you can save. Don't miss the end of January sale only at Oak Furniture Land. Onward! Must end Sunday. As a small business owner, I need to know that when I'm out on business, I'm not closed for business. I no longer need an office. Just, um... A little peace and quiet at the boardroom table. Which is also the coffee shop table. At O2, we get small businesses. That's why you can work from anywhere on the best business network. Search O2 Business or visit an O2 shop. 2019 Mobile Industry Awards terms apply. See o2.co.uk slash terms. It's time. Time to spoil yourself rotten. And that's something that a Saga Boutique cruise is rather good at. Boutique is gazing out at the ever-changing view from your own private balcony. It's exciting your palate in one of our intimate speciality dining restaurants. Boutique is an explore ashore concierge who'll accommodate your every whim. An overnight stay so you can spend more time ashore letting your hair down. Boutique is small and personal, so you're never just a number. Go on, spoil yourself. There's no reason not to. To save up to 35% on our all-inclusive cruises, search Saga Boutique Cruises. Over 50s only. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Blair accepts Brexit and says there's no going back, we're not going to rejoin, let's not focus on that, let's try and get on with it as best we can and try and make a success of it. I think it's to be welcomed, but a lot of you still don't trust him one little bit. Now, of all the European leaders, the most pro-EU at the moment is the French president, Emmanuel Macron. He is a fanatic, and on the day he became president, you know, he walked onto the stage with Ode to Joy, the year the EU anthem playing. I wonder, I wonder how the French are coping with this, or Emmanuel Macron is coping with this, now that we are separate. I'm going to speak to LBC's correspondent in Paris, Peter Allen. Peter, good morning. Good morning, Nigel. So how has Macron um, responded to Brexit? He's not a happy man at all, Nigel. He came on uh, national television on Friday and announced to the nation that uh, Brexit was the result of lies and manipulation. Oh, dear. Uh, He said he was terribly upset by it all. But he said that uh, he was a decent chap and that uh, he will support Britain in its sovereign choice as well. Very okay. diplomatic. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, yes, I guess, if you believe that you want the European Union to be a global superpower, a nation the size of the UK leaving is not going to please you very much. Uh, but in a way, I guess him talking about Brexit is quite useful, isn't it? Because if you read the newspapers in this country this morning, Peter, uh, you would think that there was no real news, uh, nothing really happening of any significance in France at all, and yet I hear things in Paris were pretty extraordinary again yesterday. It goes on and on, Nigel. Every Saturday, the Yellow Vest 
come out into the centre of Paris. I saw a lot of them uh, just by the Council of State uh, next to the Louvre Museum, which of course is full of tourists on a Saturday. A lot of the entrances were, were, were shut down um, because of the dangers of an occupation by the so-called Gilets jaunes. Uh, there's per- perpetual protests over here. There's lots and lots of violence. There are lots and lots of police around all the time. And um, the main protest is Saturday, but you also get uh, a lot of protests during the week as well. There's a, a, another attempt at a general strike planned for this Thursday um, when there will be lots of demonstrations as well. So it's a pretty bleak picture, to be honest. Not a happy country. And have, has, the, has the president's own popula- popularity rating fallen as a direct result of all of this? French presidents are never popular until they uh, retire or uh, if they die. It's always been the case, uh, and Macron is no different. He has a small constituency, Nigel, but he doesn't have overall support. No, and and I also hear that there were clashes or scuffles that took place between security services or between police and firefighters even yesterday. That was an extraordinary um, situation. It was a bit early in the week, Nigel. I uh, witnessed it. It was the CRS riot police yeah. piling in to a lot of um, firemen who were pushing for better working conditions and increased pay. And uh, they were trying to block a road, and the CRS went in, wow. and uh, a punch-up ensued. Extraordinary fight. When the servants of the state turn against each other, something is very, very wrong. Peter, thank you very much indeed for that. I mean, is that amazing? Can you imagine in this in this country, if something like that had happened, I mean, be, I mean be, we'd, we'd be saying, what on earth has happened to us? France feels even when you go to France, Paris, and you see what's going on, it's 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 even more miserable than the UK was in the 1970s. This is not a happy country, and as Peter said, an attempt to get another general strike going this. Thursday. Betty is calling from Soho. Betty, good morning. Good morning. That was quick. Hello. Okay. Don't like Tony Blair. I think it's a red herring even discussing him because he is a master of the bleeding obvious. I have no idea why he brought it into the show. Because um, I'll tell you why, Betty, because he is still a huge, significant figure and actually he has been one of the rallying points for the Remainers for those wanting a second referendum over the course of the last three and a half years. He has been very active in this debate, Betty, and that's why I brought him into the show this morning. OK, but I... It's you I, I want to talk about, OK? You went to my daughter's university at University of Leeds six years ago. She's a hard-left student. Mm-hmm. And she came back inspired by you. Bizarrely inspired, she said. I don't know why, but he was really compelling. Since that time, I'm not a Brexiter, but I'm not a bitter Remainer. I've lost a lot of friends insisting that Brexit had to happen because it was a result of the referendum. Mm -hmm. Since that time, you've said things like, you're not going to cave into the Tories, but you caved in, that Boris's Brexit was rubbish, yet you're standing in the streets holding flags and joining in the party. I just find that you are starting to become like any other politician. All right, Betty, very Beige simple, very simple. And not transparent, and a little bit hypocritical. Hang on, one more thing, and I think there should be a new term coined called smugism. I think all you're doing now is rev- revelling in smugism. You're a smuggist. Well, I'm revelling, Be- Betty, I am revelling. You're absolutely right. I am revelling. I'm, I'm joyous, actually. I'm not smug, I'm joyous, actually, because I, I embarked upon this fully nearly three decades ago and i've put my i've put the best part of my adult life into this so allow me to be joyous that it's happening let me be clear i've said it a thousand times i'll say it to you very very clearly the deal that boris negotiated back in october is awful and if we followed it to its letter it would not be brexit but he has now since then and before the general election, and he's going to say it again tomorrow, he's going way beyond that agreement that was hatched that night in Brussels. And he is saying we will not align with EU rules. He is saying the ECJ will not uh, handle trade disputes. And he's saying, come what may, we're leaving next year. Now, he is, he's making uh, big demands. But, Betty, if he does those things, I will literally have got everything I want. So I, I went from being very, very, very strongly against him to now this morning supporting him because he has shifted what he said. But, Nigel, that's orchestrated. I never agreed with anything you did, but I had a grudging respect for your honesty and your charisma. But I see you're just selectively editing everything. So should I oppose him on... Hang on, Betty. What more can I ask for 
than to leave without regulatory alignment, to leave without the ECJ, uh, to leave, uh, you know, for, for us to sit on our own in the WTO. Now, he hasn't mentioned fishing yet, I grant you, and that's something. But what else could I ask? How could I oppose him, Betty, when he's saying... He has th- suddenly changed his clothes. This is all orchestrated. He's getting everything ready for a no-deal Brexit. And then in well, time, he's well, going to say, I'm sorry, if we're going to have to go without a deal. If that's, the case, if that's the case, I'd be very happy to. Why would well, I? You, why would I oppose, Bessie? Why would I oppose? Look, I've opposed the Conservative Party and the Labour Party, but I've opposed the Conservative Party particularly for nearly three decades. They are now publicly saying all the things I agree with. When they say the right things, I will support them, Bessie. If he doesn't keep to these promises, I will of course, I'll come back I of I'll course, will, I of course will become very, very critical. But but to to be against things for the sake of it wouldn't make sense. No, I agree, but it does all feel very slightly orchestrated. I mean, everyone's being a little bit paranoid, schizophrenic, and saying Tony Blair wants to be, uh, you know, a leader again. And it's all nonsense. I mean, he's passed. He was bad in some ways. He was very good because he was a very good spe- spoke, um, spokesman uh, and, and ambassadorial and all these things. But the fact of the matter is, he just wants to have his voice heard, and we should just ignore him. But I'm just upset because I think you did stand out. And, and even though I didn't agree with, with the, virtually anything you stood for, I respected the fact that you managed to make a difference. Um, I, I, I think Tony, not Tony Blair, Cameron is, he, you know, he came under your influence. And I actually am very worried. I think in two years' time, we'll be begging to join the EU again. No, no, no. I mean, no. I've had people like Sky Engineers say that they voted out. Well, then they realise that when they, as soon as they get, at the moment they're being paid, the minute they're in front of their steering wheel of their vans to go mm. and do their work. Mm. But they reckon that under the under Brexit, that's all going to change. No, and no, no. Get Betty, 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 that's got nothing to do with Brexit whatsoever, all right? And look, there are some people who voted leave that regretted it, yes. But there's many, 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 many more that voted remain that are now perfectly happy with the direction we're going. By the way, Betty, can I ask you, how is your daughter getting on? She is become woker than ever, which I'm not happy about. Right. <laughs> but um, she's a very, very intelligent, good girl, and she's working. She wants to get involved in overseas aid, and she's doing an MA in it. Good for her. But I was shocked when she came back and said that all, she and all her friends were impressed with you. It just shows how someone with an individual personality and a bit of charisma can actually make people think. I'm not, you know, I'm similar politics to her. Yeah. But we don't like to be labelled and herded into one stable. Mm, mm, mm. Well, but I do think you've changed on every stance and caved in. I haven't changed on HS2. I haven't changed on that. On that, I haven't changed on my belief that we need a bit more selective education in our inner city. I, I mean, Betty, I've not changed. Actually, do you know what? Maybe I should have changed more than I have. I haven't changed on a blooming thing. I promise you. But, but you got you got you got Boris in. He wouldn't have got in without you. Let's put it. That no, of way. course, so, of course. But look, wasn't that better than Mrs. May? Well, she was honest. I mean, I had a grudge respect for her as well. No. And the thing, the thing is. Even though I'm, I, I was anti not doing, not going through with the referendum, people like Rhys Mogg just kept chucking more and more obstacles in the way. You just weren't going to do it without you. It had to be your Brexit, a hard Brexit. Sometimes you can't always get what you want in life, you know. But you I gonna, know, you know. Betty, I know that. But you know what? At the moment, I've got a Prime Minister, whether I trust him on a personal level or not, I've got a Prime Minister who is saying the right things. I would look pretty stupid to stand up and still be fighting him. At some point, you have to recognise that for now, we've won. Betty, thank you for your call and for your passion. This is the Sunday edition of the Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's 11.45 and time for the news with Thomas Watts. Coming up at 12 on LBC, Majid Noirs. European Council President Donald Tusk has said he feels empathy for an independent Scotland. Do you feel empathy for Scottish nationalists? On LBC. If you started your own furniture store today, you might not call it Fishpools. But if it was 1899 and your name was Ernest Fishpool, well, it actually was. And he actually did. These days, Fishpools in Waltham Cross is one of the largest furniture stores in the southeast with a stunning range of on trend designs. There's up to 50% off in our winter sale, but only until Sunday. See it all in store and at fishpools.co.uk. That's a website, Ernest. <coughs> Hello. It's time you swapped your daily grind for some sun, sea, and salsa. 
Sangria, Sun Lounger, Siesta, Salsa, The Dip, Sandal, Santa Lotion. Uh, we've done salsa, right? We've in the Seychelles, Spain, or anywhere else in the world at surprisingly low prices. When you need a holiday, it's time to travel Republic. Book with confidence at all protected. January is tough enough without a broken boiler. Keep your home warm and working this winter with two years interest-free credit and your boiler installed by one of our expert engineers. Plus, you'll get a five-year British gas warranty. And we can even quote by video call after work or on weekends. Get a quote by the 29th of February and you can also get £200 off a new boiler or £400 off for our existing home care customers. Search British Gas New Boiler. Conditions apply. A credit limit of up to £1,500. What do you have to do to get it? Simple. Get online and check if you're eligible for an Ocean credit card in minutes without affecting your credit score. For your Ocean credit card, visit ocean.co.uk now and get all that from Ocean. Intelligent London Limited is a credit broker. Capital One, the exclusive lender. Representative 39.9% APR variable. Borrow and spend responsibly. I pledge to leave a gift in my will. Cancer Research UK. To live a fuller life. To save more lives like my mum's. Gifts in wills fund over a third of Cancer Research UK's life-saving research. I pledge to continue researching. To find new treatments for patients. To stop cancer from coming back. Pledge right now to leave a gift in your will to Cancer Research UK. And together we will beat cancer for future generations. To find out more, search Cancer Research UK Pledge. GCSEs, A-levels. For exam success without the stress, only one name stands out. Justin Craig. A Justin Craig Easter course kickstarts revision, consolidates knowledge, boosts confidence and improves exam technique. With over 30 years experience, Justin Craig has helped more than 100,000 students secure their university place. For Easter revision course details, visit justincraig.ac.uk. Justin Craig. Just in time. At the Bank of Antandek, they've created Stan, a smart bot that can predict the future of remortgaging. I read Stan. Will my mortgage rate go up? 1955 was the last time Newcastle won the cup. No, I try not to mumble. Playing. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh. Oh. Meanwhile, at Santander, they can't predict your future, but they'll help secure it with great mortgage rates fixed for up to 10 years. See what's possible at Santander. Early repayment charges apply. Lending subject to status and criteria. Your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayment. On your mortgage. The Nigel Farage Show on LBC. Should we forgive Tony Blair for the last three and a half years? As he says, we've got to get on and make the best of it, and there's no going back into the European Union. Well, look, I was conciliatory towards him on Friday night. To totally trust him would perhaps be a mistake, but I think those who fear infiltration from Blair are perhaps going a bit over the top. Now, earlier on, I talked about the new commemorative 50p coin, and I was very pleased to get uh, one of the first 4,000 of them. Uh, on on out on the first day and there'll be more millions printed and coming into circulation in 1973 there was a new 50p coin to mark our joining the eec it was the linking of hands with the british hand linking up with the others i don't remember tony ben or enoch powell saying they would refuse to use that 50p coin but it's a bit different this time round, isn't it and today a brilliant piece i thought from dan hodges in the mail online and headline, as bitter remainers rant about 50p coins, who are the fruitcakes and loonies now? And I like that because that's what they used to call me and all my supporters. And it really, I mean, I do think that they're beginning, some of them, to make themselves look really rather silly. I mean, Alistair Campbell. I mean, come on, Alistair, for goodness sake. I, for one, should be asking shopkeepers for two 20p pieces and a 10p coin if they offer me a 50p pretending Brexit is about peace, prosperity and friendship with all nations. I mean, honestly, it looks apt. It looks bitter. It looks twisted. Um, I mean, amazing. And Lord Adonis! He regularly comes in here on Sundays. I mean, Lord Adonis, who refuses to use the new 50p coin. But better than that, Here's Adonis this week. I mean, it's great stuff, this. The case for rejoining the EU is growing. We may be back sooner than you think. I mean, what's happened to these people? 
What has happened to these people? But I remember meeting Adonis about 10 years ago, talking about education with him. And I thought he had some really interesting things to say. Then he, of course, became the father of HS2, and I began to doubt his judgment. But now, I mean, this is... It's bonkers! We've left. We're not going back. Even Tony Blair accepts that. Rick from Blackpool. Good morning, Rick. How are you? Morning, Nigel. How are you? Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. You sound pretty happy, Rick. I'd like to officially give you your title, what I've been calling you for many years, oh. Protector of the Realm. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you at Files. You were fantastic. Yeah, well, I, I mean, Rick, I have been touring the country relentlessly, and I've, I've done over 2,000 events. I've done over 2,000 yeah. speaking oh, I engagements. I, I, I watched many of them streamed, most of them. Well, the early ones weren't streamed, Rick. The early ones were in village halls. And if I got 30 or 40 to come in the early days, back in the 90s, I was really, really pleased. I once did an event in a village hall in Wiltshire, and nobody came. Literally oh. zero. Nobody came. So so I've, 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 I've done a bit over the years. Rick, what do you make you of... You certainly Blair? have, Nigel. Do you, um, you recognise that what Blair has said is quite significant and, and, in its way, good news. What? Who said? Blair. Tony Blair. Who is, who is he, Nigel? <laughs> OK, Are we fine. as bad as the BBC now for giving him a platform? Well, do you know what? We can't, you cannot <laughs> avoid the fact that this guy was a very powerful Prime Minister in this country. Absolutely, yeah. Who, you know, who still has significant friends around the world. You know, he is part of the globalist project, and like it or not, when Blair speaks out, it is news. Um, forgiveness is a very, it's a very strong word, Nigel. I think we should string him up, to be honest. <laughs> put him, put him <laughs> next to Major and all the rest of them. Uh, yeah, I can't condone that, Rick. That's really naughty of you to say so. I, I know, Nigel. No, you, you're going to get, get me in real fun. trouble here, aren't you? And I'll be booted <laughs> out, you know. <laughs> well, it won't be the first time, Nigel. You know how to handle it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, it's I true. can I ask you a quick yeah, question, it's a, Nigel? It's a, it's a fair cop. Uh, yeah, go on, ask me. Does this make us Remainers now because we want to remain outside the EU? <laughs> well, now here's the funny thing. Here's the funny thing. The status quo is now with us. And, the, mo and the most difficult thing in British politics, and around the world too, but specifically the most difficult thing in British politics is overturning the status quo, given our electoral system and everything else. And that is why, above all, the chances of us rejoining are hovering at around about zero. Rick, fantastic. We have God won. Bless you, Nigel. We, we have won the war. We now have to go on and win the peace. But we are in a Brilliant. but we're in a great place. Rick, have a great Sunday lunchtime. Enjoy yourself. I'm going to get a Finchley and speak to Jonathan. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Nigel. We are so not in a good place. That is a big untruth, let's put it that way. Uh, we are okay. in a big mess. We have 11 months to clear it up, a mess that you personally are responsible for. Thank you. And, uh, and Tony Blair, for all his faults, wherever they may be, at least he's a person who's, who's run a government and has had to deal with decisions and policies. You just sit there and stand on your stage on Friday and say, oh, it's just detail. That's what you said on Friday. I watched it. I um, said, I said in an historical context... The big moment was coming at 11 o'clock. And when people look back on this in 100 years' time, this is the moment yeah. that they will remember. And the rest will be seen by history to be detailed, but it is very important. What, is, ro what is wrong with that? But, 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 well, I'll tell you what's wrong with it, Nigel. It's that, it, it, that let's, let, let's look at some very micro details in a, in a, in a simple middle-class life like mine. Yeah? Ah. I've got two young kids. Mm -hmm. I've got two young kids, like many people have all across the country, yes, who've had a number of opportunities taken away from them. Like what? Okay? And like, like, what? like the freedom to travel and work. Oh, and, and, right. Uh, so it's gonna be, is, is it going to be illegal to go to France? It's not going to be illegal. It's going to be much more difficult. They won't have to say how much freedom. How much more difficult will it be? They'll need to get a visa. Will they? To go and work there. Yes. Well, well, to well, work well they, they, to may work need a work, they may need a work permit to get there. But, Jonathan, your yes. kids, I, mean, I don't know how old yes. they are, but, 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 but... 13 and 14. Well, by the time they're 18 and want to start travelling, I mean, Europe, they won't be going to Europe. They'll be going somewhere exciting. Oh, you've decided where they'll my children... My, my children are French speakers, and they're going to want to go to France. But that's beside the point. You can't tell me exactly where my... I don't even know where my children are going to go. Do you take Who goes to Frankfurt for a gap year, Jonathan? I want to ask you... Who goes to Frankfurt for a gap year, Jonathan? I've been asking this to, to all people who, who <laughs> I know who voted for Brexit. Let me ask you this question. 
the, the freedom to move has been taken, it was going to be taken away from us in 11 months' time, okay? What am I personally, or what are you, what are we actually going to actually get? I'm not, I'm not interested in the sovereignty and democracy. No, you're not. Kind of I, I can tell. Positive. No, what I can tell. specifically am I going to get? No, 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 no. I, when you, I mean, you actually, you sum up the globalist pro-EU debate when you say I'm okay. not interested in democracy. No, 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 I didn't say I'm not interested in democracy. You did. I'm very interested in democracy. No, no, no. I said in this context of this question, yes, I'm not interested in your answers about giving me, telling me I'm going to get democracy and all that nice, fluffy stuff. I, that's important. I'm asking you specifically, what will I get that I didn't have before? What freedom will I have? What money will I have? What, what, you will what live, specifically? You will live in an independent country that makes what its own I, laws. What will I get where as a result of living my independent country? Where our politicians are directly accountable to us. And when you vote in elections, and it, whatever your particular particular area of interest is whether the government and, and whether our parliament gets things right or gets them wrong they will be responsible for those decisions and that fundamentally changes democracy in this country will completely change the engagement that the electorate have with their local MPs it means MPs are going to have to work for their money in the most extraordinary way and Jonathan what it also gives us is an opportunity to reposition ourselves in the world. We weren't able to do that. We were stuck inside a European Union. We had no seat at the World Trade Organization, no ability to do bilateral deals, and we'd been stuck inside an EU foreign policy that meant in vast areas of the world we had no voice. Now, Jonathan, I'm not promising you that it will be a land of milk and honey, but I am promising you that it'll be different in those senses. I mean, tell me something. Do you, I mean, are you going to go on wishing for us to rejoin? Absolutely, but that's beside the point. I'd really love you to do me a big favour and the whole nation, whoever's listening to this wonderful programme on LBC, answer the actual question that I've asked. Just answer the question, yes? Give me one I just have. simple, I, I straight... Just no, have. you have not answered my question. We're going to be a democratic country, Jonathan. Question. No, we, hang on. We're hang going to be a democracy, Jonathan. I, I understand, but what well, 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 specifically... Well, okay. <laughs> Specifically, just as an idea, an example, potential, what am I going to get on my plate, what, actually, in my life? What will I be able to do that I couldn't do before? What, Tell me what, what specifically. You haven't given me any specifics because you don't do you know, details. Do you know, Tony do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know, nearly one and a half million people died so we could be a free country. It was an incredible price this country paid. And I was very pleased that Guy Verhofstadt did actually, just before the Brexit vote, actually acknowledge some of the good that Britain had done before. If that wasn't for us to be a free, independent, democratic country, I mean, what is wrong, Jonathan, with being a self-governing, normal nation? I can't put a price on freedom, but that's what you're going to get. We can have we can have that discussion. I'm happy to have it with you another time. But I'd really, if we've got two minutes left on the What do you want, a fiver? I, no, a tenner? A, a, yeah, a fiver would be better than ah, nothing. Oh, right, so yes. I can buy you off. You don't believe in liberty and freedom and democracy. You want cash. No wonder you love the EU. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, of course, leaving the EU has cost me cash because I'm now unemployed. I've got the EU equivalent of a P45, but I feel like a free man. Well, relatively so. I'll be back with you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at 3 this afternoon. It's Ian Payne, but up next, it's Majid Nawaz. Thank you, Nigel. Coming up, the first parent to face prosecution after withdrawing his child from a school because it offers LGBT lessons says he's willing to go to jail. The lessons at Parkfield were launched ahead of the new sex and relationships curriculum, which becomes compulsory in all English schools in September. Though parents will be allowed to withdraw primary age children from lessons focusing on sex, the relationships content is compulsory. The father's saying it's confusing, but what's confusing about LGBT lessons? But first, former European Council President Donald Tusk says Brussels feels empathy towards an independent...